So our first, first make sure agenda item waiting. is announcements. Does anyone have any announcements? Um, I know that the preservation maps, uh, I think it's a biannual, meaning every other two years, um, meeting is happening on September 27th in Worcester. It's a little bit spendy, so, uh, but if anybody's interested, they can just take a look at their website and see what sort of sessions they're providing. Madeline, are you going to be there? No. No, I get no, not this year. I'm excited. <laughs> I've been to very few conferences in my life, so they're like a new and fun thing for me. Oh, cool. um, and uh, and actually, there's a one of the things that I signed up for is a rural cemetery walk. So um, that should be interesting. Given one of our agenda items are in the Wildwood Cemetery, learning what they're doing out there. Um. Anyone else have any announcements? Yeah. No. Nope. Nate, Jacinta, anything? I don't have anything. Yeah. Okay. So item number two, uh, Community Preservation Act, um, confirmation of the Community Preservation Act committee representative. Did we vote on that last time? I'm pretty sure we did. I it's think like every did. Yeah, but I think Nate just wanted to confirm um, that you would still be going forward with it. Yes, I accept, and I probably need to go and sign some paperwork at Town Hall. And I also think I'm probably the member that needs to, at least one of the members, if not the only member that needs to sign the preservation restriction as well. Um, and then, uh, so that's item A. Um, so confirming that I am, uh, ready and willing to serve for another year. Um, item B to B, a discussion and a review of CPA proposal mid-century modern building surveys update. I believe that Madeline. Yeah, I don't have much for us today. I I'm not sure if we're in a position really to submit a CPA proposal this year because um well, I can just tell you, I have just a, a like a preliminary list of buildings and and then it's a question of whether we want to include neighborhoods, which is um, like more of in a more um, as area forms or okay. because there's really there's only like here, I have it here. Um, I have. Yeah, there's 19 buildings uh, identified so far, and it's really not um, a complete list. So I'm not sure if that's required for us to be moving forward with this proposal or not. Um, I don't. I mean, if we have a pro if we have a list of 19 resources and um, a couple of areas how many how many resources in in the areas i don't that's the thing i don't know what these areas would be i mean i know i know hetty knows about kind of certain neighborhoods that are what we're doing is it's dating between 1930 and 1980 that's what needs to be surveyed in okay. amherst i'm not suggesting we survey everything okay just some note of, you know you want to send mm -hmm. me your list, Madeline? Just, yeah. just so I can um, check it with notes that I have. Um, I, I what, What's the deadline for CPA applications? The, the 30th, right? Yeah, yeah. September 30th. Um, I mean, I would be inclined to... Um, so the first thing I would say would be with 19 definitive properties. And then I'm just trying to think of, well, the, I mean, some of the um, developments like Echo Hill would be a development, um, Ice Pond or whatever that um, development is. It's pretty modern looking um, off of Route 9 uh, to, going toward Belcher Town. Um, yeah, so, right. We could have right, gate those, gate. Could, those types of things could be in the survey if we want them to be. Yeah, and then it would just be a matter of... If we want them to be, though. I mean, I don't know if that's, like, what the survey is for. 
there's there's also things like um the the house in South Amherst that is the subject house in the um oh god I've forgotten his name he's a writer um, yeah I have that one Tracy Kidder yeah um, house that Tracy Kidder writes about um that that would be the kind of thing that you know the Sue Wayne house yeah that's it that's the name that's one of it that's one of the buildings <laughs> right so if you think about it from um from a go an out outside going in so i think 1980 is a little bit too recent that's only 44 years right yeah, yeah. 75 70, five, 70 yeah. 75 cut off um and then think about the larger developments that are part of that you know that latter half of the era and then there would be a number of properties there and then these kind of solo buildings that are scattered all throughout town. Um, I mean, I think that sounds like a pretty good grouping and that to not lose momentum, I think it would be great if we could submit an application. Um, mm. You know, it would essentially come up for our review <laughs> right in our next meeting. So we get to see it again. But um, I think the yeah. hard, the most challenging part is probably um, figuring out how to price it. How many, how many, um, how many yeah. properties, you know, so an area form by, you know, you might have, I don't know how many are, are you know, townhouses are in Echo Hill, like, you know, you would have, you know, you would survey one or two of those, but you still have a description of the whole area form, but um, I could figure out what a good ballpark number is. Uh, well, I know uh, that, you know, from MHC planning grants, planning survey grants, it's usually uh, like, Three hundred dollars per property. A little, yeah, a little bit less than that. A I little think. less. I mean, yeah. there was one recently that was that much, and that was higher yeah. rent. Yeah. So right. if we did twenty, that would be six thousand. Right. And then um, the, question, the other question is, um, you know, with the area forms and um, like, how much does a consultant want to work for? You know, do they want a six thousand dollar grant or do they want a ten thousand dollar grant? You know, how would you build enough properties in there to make it worthwhile to attract a consultant? That would be my other question. I mean, I'd rather go large right the like economy of scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, if you had like several areas, like six areas, that would bump it up to twenty five properties, and then. But it's also kind of what would what would maybe be feasible to receive funding. Yeah. I mean, I would think a ten or a fifteen thousand dollar grant. But the other question I have is that um, you know, you talked about doing a um a survey plan <laughs> before we did a survey. Um, so that that could be something, if we did a survey plan, this could be one of the things that we would ask the consultant to develop, you know, what would a phase of survey look for, look like, you know, and we could supply that information with what we gathered already, but for mid-century um, modernist, you know, buildings, um, and then that would be their job to kind of develop, they would literally develop, you know, the parameters for the survey, and then in a future MCA round, we could go in for a matching grant and have our, you know, have our application pretty much ready because the survey plan would, would basically, you know, would be phase one or phase two or whatever. So that's another approach if we're not ready to do a, an application for this round. And yeah. May, I'm sorry, did we say that the planning budget had room to fund a survey plan? Yeah, yeah. I think we just have to it can support that. We would just have to get a scope of services okay. and put that together. But I, I do think like if we wanted to put in a $15,000 request and say we have, you know, 30 properties in a few areas, I think it's worth it to move that forward. Uh, yeah. You know, the funding won't be available until next July anyways. And then, sure. you know, it's just a, you know, it's a, it's a seeking three quotes from consultants. And so we just did this with East Amherst for the expansion of a local historic district there you know, we put out um, a request for services, inventory, you know, completing inventory forms for 60 properties and helping complete a few sections of a, of a study report. And I think the bid came in around 19.5. Um, so, okay. 
you know, and we, so I think for this one, if we had 15,000 to me, that's, you know, there's some local consultants who would be really, you know, who would probably be interested in that. And I think we'd get, you know, a good product. Okay. Um, yeah. Julia, okay. Do you, Nate or Jacinta have, uh, or Madeline or anyone else have ideas about um, like the developments that would be good area forms? You know, like I said, I was thinking of this, um, I always call it ice pond. It has a different. Yeah, no, it's I, yeah, ice like, pond. In those, like, Grove, red, I think it's yeah, yeah, right. Um, I mean, Redgate Lane area um, yeah. has some. What's oh, that? Not, oh, go ahead. Say that again. <laughs> Redgate Lane red. up behind Wildwood Elementary Lane. School. Yes. Yeah, but Redgate Lane is it was developed sort of plot by plot. I'm thinking of the areas that were developed as whole developments. That's what I was thinking of ice pond. Oh, um, like that kind. The area, yeah, I mean, Glen Glendale, like in South Amherst, those little nineteen fifties houses there. I think there's there's also Hampshire College, which has um, groupings of you know congregate housing. It's true. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is if we want to include like campus architecture, there's plenty of really notable buildings um yeah, i mean i was thinking that well you know some of it was mid-century modern is you know of the age where it's kind of on the threshold but most of them probably haven't been inventory they could use some protections or at least some identification and research and so you know amherst just has some and they're just you know i i'm sure they're uh, mostly overlooked and so even if we start small and just get you know a few you know two dozen and a two areas done for fifteen thousand or whatever we think it is like to me that's a good start like we don't i don't I don't, I'm not looking to grow this. I think maybe it would be after we have, um, you know, another study done townwide kind of assessment, then we could redirect efforts. But this would be, let's, you know, have a smaller request this year to CPA. Okay. Did, did, did you say in the beginning of that, that you would support the idea of doing this, um, some campus buildings or not? I don't know. If it, if it grows too much, it just seems like, you know. I mean, yeah, it's, it's hard can. to select. I, just, I don't know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I don't think Hampshire's that well. I don't know. Is this a, I don't know the, the level of threat or. Yeah. There, and there's so much written about Amherst College and right. UMass. And, yeah. It's good to pinpoint for us, too, I think, for the commission, where this kind of, for me, where it started was that house at the very far end of one of those cul-de-sac roads off of South Pleasant Street. Remember some, Robin, do you remember it? Pat, do you remember it? It was a, a little house brick um, and the owner wanted to take it down. Remember this? It was a demo delay thing. Was and that it, the it, one that flooded? The, yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't, um, not quite as, I mean, I think the list that, I don't, I think that's, you know, that street is a little development. I mean, I think yeah. the list that Madeline has is the really standout examples, right? So we have kind of the standout examples of really more modernist architecture. I mean, yeah, there's not many. There's not many, <laughs> they're there and they, you know, they yeah. need to be documented and protected. And then there are, you know, developments from that era. So I'm assuming the Redgate houses are on that list. And they're now. They are now. Yeah, right. But I feel, yeah, I think just understanding the neighborhood development could be could be a good ex sort of part of this exercise. Um, yeah, maybe and affordable housing. It's always, uh, yeah. All right, I'll have I'll expand. I can definitely expand, and then select some area forms, some areas for area forms. Yeah, I mean, I was just looking um, around the map, like Morgan Circle in North Amherst is kind of interesting. Um, yeah. Which circle, Nate? Sorry, what do you say? Which circle in North Amherst? Morgan Circle. It's just Morgan. south of Cushman. Okay. It's so wooded, that, but... Um, but but that and, and Echo Hill, by selecting some houses from both of those areas, I think would fit the description of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And and maybe to stick to residential, I, I think the college buildings are a whole nother 
yeah, area like of that. interest. Yeah, and we have the North, I have on this list, the North Amherst Fire Station, the elementary schools. So by sort of identifying them and writing about them, we're not necessarily like advocating for their, I don't, you know, I'm fully in support of plans to redevelop our schools, but I think it, it's also interesting to understand their history Oh, absolutely. I mean, So, we're creating our inventory of resources. I mean, whether they remain standing or not is, you know, only what only part of part of the issue. It's the historical record. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's Dennis Drive too, like right opposite Shea Street, almost. Try. Um. Yeah, Munson Library was another one somebody suggested, which is good. Bangs Community Center. Mm -hmm. Ann Whalen Apartments in the center of town. Um, I want to um, circulate the list and, and if any of us have anything to add, we can go yes, from here and then. For sure. Yeah, I, uh, I was in touch with um, some faculty at the architecture um, department at UMass and they were really helpful. So yeah. that's great. Okay, awesome. All right, so you'll go ahead and we'll have Madeline just submit it um, since this is our, our meeting before the deadline. Yeah, I mean, we could have a vote of the commission maybe or we just agree by consensus that Madeline and staff could work on it or the, in the chair, I guess. Um, sure. Let me just look at the application to make sure we covered most of this. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like seven or eight I mean, questions. You know, it. So, you know the yeah, last part, overview. Forward, yeah. You know, are, you know, what is it, what is the threatened resource? Who's benefiting from it? Um, are there additional funds? And there's always a chance to follow up your answers. The CPA committee will ask follow up questions and ask for you know, um, you know, there'll be a little bit of a uh, information gathering with them. So, yeah, and actually, if um, I mean, if we do get awarded CPA funds, then that could be used as a match to apply for an S and P grant next year. So. Although we can't, you know, we can't uh, request CPA money as a match for a grant. No, but we can get a CPA grant and that can be the match to it apply. Could. I mean, my, well, anyway, that's just my whole thing. <laughs> my whole thing of being a CPA is I'm always trying to get our applicants to apply, so, for, to lower their CPA asks by applying for funds from other good sources. But anyway. <laughs> strategy. Um, estimated timeline is another um Part of the application we might want to discuss. I mean, I mean, I'd say under you know within a year. I mean, to me, like we would just you know be, and that's not that long. Okay. And if we think it's going to take longer, I mean, I'm just saying like, you know, could be just do it next months. fall, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, urgency. Well, just we should know about these resources as soon as we can. Um. Yeah, I would just make a case for, you know, documentation is critical when, you know, endangered resources come before the commission for demolition that can happen at any time. Yeah. And, and this helps us be... evaluate like demolition review for other properties that are within this right construction date yeah, era. Exactly. Provides context. Yep. Um okay. Right. Thank you. Great. Right. Thank you. Thanks for taking that on. Sure, no problem. And um, I'm assuming that we're all on the topic of CPA. We don't have any applicants with any questions at this point. In the, I only see one attendee. I see Hilda and the attendees, but I don't think. No, I think um, application. I've heard that there might be like two or three historic ones, and you know they'll probably come to the commission next month or the you know at some point to have the commission ask questions and then make a recommendation to the CPA committee. So. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, item number three as well with cemetery documentation and mapping needed. Um, I think I met with um, Rebecca Freck uh, uh, last week. I can't remember. Um, uh, or maybe a week and a half ago. Um, and 
uh, Madeline is taking on or has maybe already taken on um, writing the architectural description for the house at the cemetery. Rebecca has um, submitted the form E to MHC for review. And I went over her over with her, um, you know, sort of the potential for um, the benefit of having either being either on the National Register or being listed, being eligible, confirmed as eligible for the National Register um, as a, um, a vantage point for different grants going forward. Um, so that's, uh, I think, a, a longer term objective. I'm going to help with the Form B for the house, um, which predates the cemetery, but I think the um, period of significance uh, would be that cemetery period. Um, so the intention there is to uh, assist, uh, have the commission assist in getting that move towards National Register nomination uh, status, which would be um, great for them and also an accomplishment for the commission. Um, I think she does not have any uh, mapping needs at this point, but when I check in with her again, I'll see if she has any other volunteer needs. She's she's really doing an amazing job. <laughs> Um, so one in five year goals, I have no updates in that area unless anyone else does. No, but I was going to just say, you know, for next meeting or the next meeting or two, I think we should revisit those, you know, Matt, okay. um, Robin had put a poll out. We just had our preservation plan completed earlier this year. And I think it'd be good to look at those and, you know, either we could have subcommittees or, you know, a sub quorum of people who might want to volunteer just to take on a task or two, but. We had kind of started that. And I think it would just be important to kind of keep that yeah, moving. I agree. Uh, the planning board did vote to incorporate it as part of the master plan. Okay. So they, they uh, you, know, you know, some members were really complimentary of the work. They liked it. Uh, they liked some of the goals. And so, yeah, I mean, I just think it's something we could just kind of revisit and come up with even like a one or two year strategy. So the housing uh, trust is doing that. We're kind of coming up with, you know, three three or four kind of actionable things we can just, the, the trust can undertake. And so, you know, from that plan, it'd be great if we came up with even like two things that we could try to further in the next year or two. Now, you know, and, and, and to, maybe there's more, but I think like, let's start there and see where we can go. Okay, I'll, um, I'll prep the materials and have them for next meeting. Okay. Um... Amherst Women's Club preservation restriction. Members need to come and sign. Yeah, so I think we only have had two signatures, so we need to um, have a few more. Okay, I will uh, put it in my calendar for Thursday. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a few more restrictions. I think like three more, so. Okay. Yeah, it'll be a very similar document. Um, okay. Uh, and then unanticipated items. Um, I noticed that Nate circulated um, an incredibly huge document, it's like 600 pages, but you only need to look at the first 25. <laughs> um, maybe Madeline can help me here. The American Council for Historic Preservation, is that right? Yep. Um, did a, a call for comments on um, the Secretary of the Interior's um, standards, preservation standards. And um, as a way of looking at how to move forward with the standards, their interpretation and their application. And um, I think it's a really interesting, I mean, it was interesting to me. It's a very, it's very well written. So it's a very easy read um, about the history of the standards, how they've changed over time. And then um, some, some ways that, um, developers and uh, preservationists have struggled with some of these restrictions and changes that they're asking for more flexibility around. Um, I thought it was, excuse me, would be uh, interesting to look at in the context of how we as a commission apply the standards. Um, I think it's really, um, it's really challenging to ask a volunteer board, some people with training in that area, some people without, some people with tons of experience, some people with very little, um, to take a look at a building and look at changes and um, 
come to a conclusion about whether or not the standards are being adhered to. And so um, one of my most recent pipe dreams would be to try to do a little presentation on maybe a more formalized way that if something comes before the commission, um, commissioners can review a change so that um, it gets to be a more specific conversation, um, particularly about, you know, looking looking at a change, you know, if, even if commissioners had like paperwork that was like, you know, okay, here's, you know, the architects are looking to do X. And then, I mean, the standards are like, they're very plain English, but, you know, you can sort of read them and and interpret them even as a lay person, like this seems to fit or this doesn't, or I don't know, like I need clarification on that. Um, I didn't, since I, before I started at MHC, I was at one of the Jones Library um, uh, meetings where we went through them. And um, I think it was much more, it was, uh, I, I found it, I found it a little uh, uh, challengingly, I don't want to say vague, but not, um, kind of not detailed enough for me to, you know, kind of really feel like, uh, I feel like the process could be improved, let's put it that way. <laughs> and I think that this document is really interesting because it talks about, you know, the challenges that you have when you're adapting, you know, building for a modern use. And um, there is this one phrase that goes along, along with the standards that is, you know, taking into consideration technical and economic feasibility. I mean, that's like, you know, you could you could drive a pretty large vehicle through that language. <laughs> but, it, you know, it gives you sense that like, you know, there is there is this kind of, you know, discussion that can be had around these items. And I think the better prepared we are, um, you know, the more we serve, you know, the public comment and being able to articulate our position. So that was, that's where I am with that. I'll see if I can actually pull something together, but. Robin, thanks so much for sharing that with with us. Um, I I am really concerned that we're down two members now of the commission, um, and given that we are, as you say, volunteers, you know, and what we're trying to process, um, it's a lot. And I want to be sure going forward that that we're able to say to people in the community yeah run you know apply to be a commissioner <laughs> you know um because it's really interesting work but you know it, it involves being in the spotlight in a way for me right now that i've never really been before um and that's that's another whole you know consideration but um there are some things about this work that you know we we, we want to be able to bring up the next generation in order to protect Amherst um, as a community as a full of very interesting architecture and streetscapes and buildings and landscapes. So it's just my two cents. Thanks, Hetty. Yeah, Nate, uh, do we have any ideas on uh, recruiting other members? No, you know, we, I think the town put out a call for uh, volunteers, but I'm not sure that there's been a lot. Okay. Um, you know, I, when just we had want, I mean, I, I have reiterated to the town directly and to you in meetings that I did have a friend of mine submit an application. And, so yeah. um, I had I, followed up with that actually a, a few weeks ago and asked if that person was still interested, but I never had a response. And so, oh, okay. I'll bug her. <laughs> yeah, I think it's worth it. Yeah. I mean, okay. You know, it's hard to, I think sometimes people volunteer thinking they can, you know, um, get on a commission or a board or, you know, to, to, you know, to talk about one project, but the, the purpose of a board or committee is much broader than a specific project. So, you know, yeah, I think, I think she, it was just, there was a long delay where, um, oh, I know, I know, I think the person you're talking about applied, um, almost a year ago. Yeah. And then just never heard anything. So I'm sort of, you know, just the importance of, you know, for good, for uh yeah, so if the importance of if someone applies, please let them know we're interested and get them before us. And and if anybody has any ideas about, particularly with anybody with expertise in architecture in this area, that would be a really great addition to have a, a certified architect on our team. Yeah, it'd be nice to have at least you know one more member. I mean, if you have you know if one's absent, it's like you know it's just really hard as a commission when you don't have that you know you have so many people missing in a meeting. The um. 
Yeah, I mean, Hetty brought up a point. I think sometimes the historical commission is put in the spotlight because someone will, you know, a file for a demolition request and it's the first time a, a project's become public. Yeah. You know, or, you know, there's like, you know, some, you know, like with a restriction, there's a few pieces, but, you know, it's one of those things where most of the community might be caught off guard because, oh my gosh, all of a sudden someone's proposing to tear down a building and they don't, they might not even know what they're doing in place of it, but that's the first step. They just want to apply for that. And so it, it does, you know, sometimes the commission is put in that position where, um, you know, it gets a lot of public feedback. Yeah. And so, yeah. I mean, we, it is, it's good to be equipped and ready for that. Um, I think that's where like the inventory work will come in, you know, the new preservation plan. Yeah, one of the goals, I, I think maybe Antonio, were you working on this? Um, was trying to get um signage up for one yeah. of the public hearing, um, like actually having a sign in front of a building that's so we could, you know, get more input. Completely, yeah. yeah. I guess now that I'm back on campus, I can physically do that. Um, okay. that would be great. You want to just like figure out what you can figure out. I'll send you a picture of a um a hearing board I saw in Annapolis. I think it was it wasn't for demolition, but it was something related to historic preservation. But it was really cool. It was like you know it was clearly something. It's like a hard physical board that they reuse, and you know it has the information and the time of the hearing and everything. And you really you really it really catches your eye. You know, so people can't. You know, it, it, I think it'd be much better for people to be able to see something ahead of time, whereas, you know, they might hear of it like a day before the hearing or something like that. And it's kind of, yeah. Thank Great. you. Should, is there anyone specific in town I should um, talk to about like having I guess, something that uh, I guess everyone would uh, agree upon as the standard or if there's any standards about that? If you have ideas, just email just and I. We do have, you know, right. a wayfinding system that's a little loose, but this could be, you know, if we, you know, maybe keep a, a color scheme or you know font family or something but i think generally it's we don't really have you know i think you, there's a lot of discretion here and creativity we could bring to it great oh i'm just realized that um i do have another announcement um there is a design standards walking tour and listening session and a visioning session coming up on the 13th and 14th. I don't know if other people saw that notice. I got it through my civic alerts. Um, I think, Hetty, did you yeah. pass the flyers? I, I did. I gave, I gave some out at UMass. Um, I was going to do the downtown area sort of behind um, the Bang Center, but in fact, it had already been done. So I've just been in touch with the person at Dodson and Finkler who's kind of just she was going to do a whole bunch more um okay. fly posting um I've put some stuff up on my social media um you know students that I know um it, it it's just a, one of those situations where you don't you don't want the usual suspects to show up you know you want People who are maybe new to the area, as well as. Right. Well, I saw them at the, they were at the farmer's market and I thought that was great. Was yeah, I mean, good. I think there's oh, been good. about 150 posters, flyers were taken in, or, you know, I, you know, maybe hopefully got put up around town. I don't know. I think we could, um, you know, I think the only hiccup right now has been they, they're asking people to register, but you don't need to register. Okay. And so a few people have said that you, they've had trouble in, um, Staff has tried too, and it like uh, it seems the Eventbrite or whatever platform they're using just errors out. And so I, I asked them if we actually had to include that. And I think they wanted it just to get a count in terms of maybe activities or something. But I, I actually think it was it's probably going to discourage people if they try to register and then they it it um, errors out on them. So I was able to register, but um, were you? Yeah. And so yeah. for me too, it it didn't look like it ever was confirmed. And so oh okay yeah. I mean it's just one of those things. I don't you know. Yeah, I just stuck it in my calendar. Is anyone else planning on going? I'm hoping to. It, it coincides with um, a tour that Steve Schreiber is giving about architecture in Amherst. Oh. Um, via the Amherst Historical Society. I think he's giving it this Friday, the 13th, September the 13th, whenever that is. Can you send that yeah. information to us? Or I didn't, I haven't seen that. Um. Put that on my calendar. Oh, there's there's hmm. so much going on, um, but hopefully it'll, it'll work out. Okay. I'll send that to people. 
Yeah, there's three events for the design standards. So, yeah. Try and make one of them. Yeah. But yeah, the, the, um, the firm, they were at the farmer's market and that was, I thought that was a good way to get information from the public. Another place to go is the transfer station. Good place. Okay. Just to chat with people. Yeah. The watering hole. I, I don't have a membership. Yeah. Can't get in. I think the walking tour with Steve Schreiber, they say they say um, Saturday the 13th from um, 10 to noon, but I actually think it's, they meant, I think they mean Saturday the 14th from okay. 10 to noon or noon to okay. two. Or yeah. Okay. Um, so that's our agenda. I think we have to determine our next meeting. And looking at the calendar, I would propose um, hold on a second, my calendar is looking funny at me. Okay, there we go. So Monday the 7th be in about four weeks, I think, which is good because the following Monday is uh, Columbus Day slash Indigenous Peoples Day. Does the Monday the 7th work for everyone? The 7 p.m.? Uh, 7th, Monday, the 7th of October. Yeah. Uh, Nate, for the time. Or 6.30? <laughs> I can't make 6.30. You could start okay. without me, but okay. I mean, I'll show up at 7. Okay. It's up to you. I don't, you know. Seven's better for me. If, if, seven's if, uh, better for yeah. me, too. Yeah. All right. So 7, seven on the 7th. Great. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's any... Um, Pending demolition applications. Are there just into? I think there's. It's been kind of quiet. No, I haven't seen any lately. I know. Sometimes you know, it gives us enough time. If something came in, it could double up as a hearing and then a meeting. But I, I'm not sure there is anything. Um, Nate, there's a a cluster of historic houses right by the what cemetery is that considered? The one by Cushman. I don't know the name of it. In North Cemetery. North Cemetery. Yeah. Um, and I just noticed that there's uh, a house that's one of, I think one of the, there's, there's like three or four, maybe 1800 houses from there. One of the one that's falling apart and has been modified, mm. um, the one across the street that's for sale. And then the one on the same side of the street is the cemetery that looks like it just had a big, maybe a carport put on and a new roof. Um, was that not? sufficient to I guess that's not enough change to, to trigger demolition no no a carport wouldn't and then you know roofing doesn't either so okay. it would be yeah the way we you know the bylaw is changed now so you know right that's okay. what you know, that was a decision of the commission right we used to see everything right from like changing right. windows to right. roofing material and so yeah you know, that doesn't really qualify anymore right okay just curious yeah I mean even the you know, yeah, I, I, yeah, there's been a few instances where I, we've, you know, I've asked the building commissioner and it, it's interesting, you know, where someone might be putting an addition on, but they're really not altering, you know, more than 25% of a facade. So it's not demolition, right? They're just putting right. on an addition and it's, right. So it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really get to that threshold. Yeah. The carport was a little um, surprising. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just really large. Um, uh, it's interesting. Have we had any follow up with just thinking of any um, demo delays we've issued in the last year, or do we ever kind of know when they're about to sunset? Like, as a yeah. way of maybe just checking in with those owners, or yeah, we like, yeah, it's you know there haven't been too many. There's one up on um, on Leverett Road. You that's know, what I was thinking of too. Yeah, yeah. So the town worked with the uh, the owner and. The idea is he wants to keep the house, maybe take the back off, but build a new house on the property and save the old house. And so um, he went through the conservation commission, and you know he's going to take down the chicken coop, which is not too old actually, and um, you know keep the barn and everything. So I think I actually haven't checked in on that, but I know he he was that that was the goal. He had you know done a lot of planning and 
Um, that would actually be a really good success one. And then. Um, so if he if he just changed his mind, he'd have to come back to us at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. It would have expired, yeah. Yep. And so you know, like Amir uh, Mikchi, he came in and did the three on Southeast Street, right near Cumberland's. Yep. Uh, you know, like still South. waiting on the one. Well, those you know those have expired, so now he has to come right. back before the right. commission. Yep. So, but he was willing. You know, he met with uh, Robin and Hetty, and then. Yep. You know, he was willing to do even more, like, you know, like if there was an exploratory demo to take pictures and everything. So, um, so it's just a matter of when he comes back. He'll need to, he'll need to come back before he gets on schedule to do anything. Nothing will happen before he comes before us. Right. And then another one that ha um, took place expired. So I think the few where there was demo issue, demo, uh, demo permits issued in the last 12, 12 months, they've all expired. So they okay. all have to come back. And so, um, yeah to know okay yeah it used to be that they could sit out there for a while we didn't have an expiration so it was nice when we changed the bylaw we added that yeah okay i didn't know that wait did the house on um was it not memorial or the street next to it the one that we were talking about earlier with the flood not that Jeffrey, and it's well? not Jeffrey Lane it's the other one yeah Memorial Drive yeah yeah Memorial, I can't remember what it's called. Hamilton is it no I, I can't remember yeah. we know what we're talking about yeah <laughs> it backs onto the golf course right and oh. all three streets are dead ends they're all oh, one of those yeah. right yeah it's a very interesting area of of town I think yeah. Oh, there's Hillcrest and then Jeffrey Lane. I don't know which that's, one. That's it. Memorial is one of them, right? Okay. Yeah. I can't remember which one it was because it's now a, two, three years ago that it came before the commission. Oh, yeah. at the end of one of those roads? Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little ranch house? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, that was up for sale last year. I saw it in Zillow. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they had to... Right, because of the flooding. Yep, I know the whole story. Yes. So they rehabbed it. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's great. We were very concerned about it in terms of losing, you know, just losing housing. Yeah, it's a house. Um, it's it's they kind of had to redo everything inside, yeah. but it looks covered it kind of original on the outside. Great. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Oh, we didn't have public comment on our agenda. Wait, I should call for public comment. If there are any members of the public who would like to provide public comment at this time, please raise your hand and you'll be promoted to the panel. No hands are being shown. No hands, okay. So at 7.47, uh, at this point we can, um, Adjourn until our next meeting, October 7th at 7 p.m. Thanks very much, Thanks everybody. everybody. Thank, yes, you. Th thank you all. Okay. Nice to see you back, Robin. Yes. Yeah. Bye.